Hello, my name is Edmond Jamna, and on behalf of DW Consult, I want to welcome you to Tutorials on the Go. Our zeal here is to help transition people with zero, struggling, or shaky base in accounting to an expert position and to a place of confidence. It is also a platform to assist in the smooth studying of the ACC and ICA professional qualifications, as well as for any tertiary accounting discipline. All that is required of you is to subscribe to our channel and click on the notification bell as well to be part of the program. Tutorials on the Go. Bringing accounting to heart. Now, today's episode's lecture. Group accounts, the consolidated statement of profit or loss. Now, as already discussed, when a company controls another or other companies, it is necessary for the controlling company to prepare a set of consolidated financial statements. Now, the controlling company is termed the parent, whilst the controlled entity or entities are referenced as the subsidiaries. We've already spoken about it at length. So, consolidated statement of profit or loss is also required as well as the consolidated statement of financial position. Now, as with the consolidated statement of financial position, the aim of the consolidated statement of profit or loss is to show the results of the group as if it were a single entity. Okay, so the objective is to show the total profits made by the group and then show the extent to which these profits are owned by the parent company and that's which is to be allocated to the non-controlling interest in the case where the parents have no absolute control over the subsidiary. Okay. Let's move on to look at certain basic principles. Now, the first is income and expenses. Okay. So, we add all of the parent income and expenses to that of the subsidiary. Now, once the profit after tax is calculated, we deduct a portion and attribute it to the non-controlling interest where it exists. The second principle is dividends. So here, dividend received by a parent from a subsidiary must be eliminated. So any dividend that is presented in the consolidated statement of profit or loss must arise from investments outside the group. The next principle is interest on loans. So interest on loans within parties to the group must be excluded from the consolidated statement of profit or loss. So if a subsidiary pays interest on a loan it received from its parent, it must be eliminated. Lastly, goodwill impairment. Now, any goodwill impairment must be recorded in the consolidated statement of profit or loss. Now, if the non-controlling interest is measured at fair value, the impairment value is to be absorbed solely by the parent. However, if the non-controlling interest is measured via the proportionate method, then the non-controlling interest will bear a share based on its holding. Now, this will affect the step four in the calculation of the value of the non-controlling interest in the consolidated statement of financial position. Okay. Let's test our understanding. Prosper, represented by P, purchased 70% of the share capital of Sheila, represented by S, on the company's incorporation in 2018. Now, the statement of profit or loss of the two companies for the year ended the 1st December 2019 are as follows. So, we have revenue for both companies, cost of sales leading to a gross profit, expenses for both companies leading to profit before taxation, then we have income tax for the year, then it will lead to the profit for the year. The other information is that return earnings brought forward for Prosper is 80,000, for Sheila is 20,000. So we are now to prepare the consolidated statement of profit or loss and the movement on return earnings for the P group. In solution, when we start with the consolidated statement of profit or loss, we will have the revenue of P, 52,000, plus the revenue of S, 24,000, will lead to a group revenue of 76,000. We move on to cost of sales, which is 12,000 for P, 10,000 for S, 22,000 for the group. Then when we less the cost of sales from this revenue, we'll get 40,000 for P, 14,000 for S, 54,000 for the group. So you can less the group vertically or you can add the gross profits horizontally. It will give you the same answer. We move on to expenses, 8,000 for P, 4,000 for S, 12,000 for the group. When we come to the profit before taxation, we we'll less it 32,000 for P, 10,000 for S, 42,000 for the group. Then we come to income tax, 12,000 for P. Then we have 3,000 for S, leading to 15,000. It will give us a profit for the year of 20,000 for P, 7,000 for S, and 27,000 for the group. We will now have to come and attribute the profit of the subsidiary to that of the parent and the non controlling interest. Mind you, the parent which is prosper does not have absolute control so the non-controlling interest will be 2100 which is their 30 percent holding because the parent has 70 percent 
ownership. Then you multiply by the profit for the year of the subsidiary, which is 7,000. Then the balancing figure, which is the group profit for the year, less that of the non-controlling interest, will be the one attributable to the parent. So we come to the movement in group between earnings. The opening, which is 94,000, came about as a result of adding the 80,000 of the parent. Then the entire group between earnings Opening was 20,000 for the subsidiary, but because P owns 70%, we find that portion. Then, when we come to the profit for the year, it was 24,900 from the question we just solved. Then, the carry forward for the group retained earnings will be 118,900. Let's test our understanding again. Getty, represented by Jean, acquired 80% of zero, represented by C, on 1st January 2017, at which date the retained earnings of C were $10,000. So the respective statement of profit or loss of the two companies for the year ended 31st December 2020 are as follows. So we have revenue for both, cost of sales for both, gross profits for both. We have expenses, profit before taxation, income tax, then profit for the year. Other information will state that retained earnings brought forward for Getty was $130,000 for sale is $18,000. So we are now to prepare the consolidated statement of profit or loss and the movement on retained earnings for the gene group. For solution, when we start with a consolidated statement of profit or loss, so revenue will be eighty-five thousand dollars for J, thirty-one for C, one hundred and sixteen thousand for the group. The cost of sales will be twenty-one thousand for J, twelve thousand for C, thirty-three thousand for the group, which will lead to a gross profit of sixty-four thousand for J, nineteen thousand for C, then eighty-three thousand for the group. We come to expenses: twelve thousand for J, seven thousand for C, then nineteen thousand for the group. Then Profit before taxation will be 52000 for J, 12000 for C, then 64000 for the group. Then income tax is 16000 for J, 4000 for C, 20000 for the group, which will lead to a profit for the year of 36000 for J, 8000 for C, then 44000 for the group. So when we are attributing the profit or the subsidiary, non-controlling interest will be $1,600, which is their 20% holding multiplied on the profit for the year of zero, which is the subsidiary, of $8,000. The difference, which is 44000 which is the group profit, less the profit for the non-controlling interest, will give a group profit of 42400 for the year. And we come to the movement in retained earnings. For the opening, we take $130,000, which is that of the parent. Then we find the portion of the retained earnings of the subsidiary that belongs to the parent. The retained earnings at the date of acquisition, which the parent is not supposed to enjoy, is $10,000. The cumulative retained earnings to the opening of the preparation of this financial statement is $18,000. So the post-acquisition reserve will be the 18 cumulative less the retained earnings at the date of acquisition, which will give $8,000. 80% of $8,000 will give $6,400. We add it to the $130,000 to give $136,400. So we add the profit for the year for the calculation we just did $42,400, which will give a carry forward figure of $119,250. Okay, people, this is where we bring our discussion to a close. I hope it went well. If you have any comment or feedback for us, do well to drop them in the comment section below and it will be timely and adequately addressed. Whilst at that, kindly subscribe and turn on all notifications. Also, follow us on our various social media handles as captured on the screen. Catch us again on another episode of Tutorials on the Go. Till then, take care of yourself and stay blessed. Poker, poker.